Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I am here to share with you seven reasons why you should read the subtweet by Vivek Shreya. First I'll give you a brief description of what this book is about. It follows two women, Neela and Rukmini. This takes place in Toronto. Neela is a musician who has a decent following in the Toronto area and Rukmini works for a like music and arts um, magazine and she does covers and the story gets started when Rukmini covers one of Neela's songs and the cover garners much more attention than the original song ever did. And while there is some jealousy on Neela's part, the two end up meeting and becoming very good friends. The conflict in the story comes to a head when something is tweeted that really hurts the other person and we follow the fallout from that. Now getting on to the seven reasons that I love this book. Number one, I thought it was a very honest, very realistic portrayal of social media and just online presence in general. I think a lot of authors struggle on how to incorporate the internet in books and when those books are contemporary the omission of like internet life can really make the book not feel very real because the internet is part of our daily lives at this point but Shreya really gets internet culture and really understands how to make it a central part of a narrative. She really gets the like unspoken etiquette around social media, the pervasiveness, the inescapability of social media and the internet in our lives. And she does this without taking a moral stance on the online world. Number two, the depiction of fame. Not only did this book explore the music industry and its cutthroat nature, but it also really shone a light on people of color in the music industry or just in entertainment industries in general, specifically themes of tokenism and erasure. The book really dives into the damage fame can have on people, but also I don't think that any parts of the plot were over the top. It was just truthful and it was very powerful to see how these events of rising fame affected the characters' lives. Number three, the discussion of call-out culture. I think this book does a really good job of dissecting this and thinking about the focus we have on calling out others, especially online, on the very good intentions that people have when pointing out someone's mistakes, when calling them out so that they can take responsibility for their actions or words and be accountable. But it also asks the question of who are they responsible to? Who are they accountable to? And how do you get any sort of meaningful action, any sort of meaningful change or restoration or redemption. I thought the author presented a very nuanced take on call-out culture. Number four, this book has well-balanced characters. And what I mean by that is no one is a hero, no one is a villain. Even when we look at the one or two characters that are the most villainous, the ones who perpetuate the most obviously wrong things, they are still painted as people who make mistakes or as people who have valid reasons for feeling the way they do or saying what they say, even if what they say or do is ignorant or misguided. Some characters might be a little self-centered at times, but no one comes across as malicious. I think she did a great job developing her characters to feel real. Number five, the book centers women beautifully. Most of the women are people of color and so have 
some shared experience as brown women in the music industry, but they all bring such different views and experiences to the table. And it was just lovely reading about their interactions and friendships. And this book is very much focused on friendship between women. There were no romantic relationships in this book. And frankly, that was kind of refreshing. It was refreshing to read a book that was focused so much on friendships between women. The difficult parts of friendship and the beautiful parts of friendship. Number six, how the book tackles friendship breakup. There are so, so, so many books that feature the romantic breakup. And this might be the first book I've ever read that really explores the emotion, the betrayal, the sadness, the loss you feel over the breakup of a friendship. I can't really think of any other books that have focused, at least specifically focused, on friends who have drifted apart or who have had a falling out and how much that hurts. I think the book really waded through the complicated and unique feelings that you have on losing friends. And finally, number seven, this book is page turning. The other six reasons are more focused on the themes or the characters or specific discussion points in the book. But I also want to get across that this was really compelling. I was tearing through the pages to find out what happens. And it wasn't compelling in a way that felt reductive around the whole theme internet topics. What I mean is you want to find out what happens because you care about the characters, not because of any reasons that feel salacious or gossipy. You are just rooting for these women. And you just need to know how things work out as they are navigating the fame and the jealousy and the intense criticism. Those are seven reasons I loved the subtweet. If you've read the subtweet, I would love to know your opinion and I'm happy to have a chat about this book in the comments below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and we'll chat soon. Take care. Bye.